Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. I'm your host, Eric Payne. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Racing with me. We're going to talk some racing again, as we normally do every week. We're going to talk racing with me, Eric Payne. Our topics of discussion this week is we have two controversies of the week. We're going to look at the first one, I think, first. Or we're going to look at it after we do the reminder of the overtime rules. Um, I told you, Trace, we have overtime in the Cup Series, or in any of the series, probably will remind everyone of the rules. But, I'm like, you know what? We're but every other way, every other week, one of the three series does go into overtime. So, what's going to happen instead is, if we go into double overtime from now on, which is, which only happens like once every two or three months. I have seen that where a race will go into double overtime, or triple overtime, and whatnot. Well, we'll get into we'll get into the rule. When I get into the rules, I'll tell you what race went into more than one overtime this weekend and how many we had. Um, results from Nashville, the current playoff pictures for all three series. Um, the reminding of the winners is not going to happen um, anymore. Once a month, what is going to happen instead is. Between now, now I will remind you of the winners if they were like if they're a playoff driver, and when I go through and tell you why, how they made the playoffs. A couple drivers' names have I have already bolded due to the fact that they're pretty much already in, unless something, unless something miraculously bad for them was to happen, or if they were, they won't make it. We're gonna also look at their next controversy of the week. Change. This week's topic uh, for education is changes to cars. Instead of just having one slide for it, I decided to do th um, one slide for each modification and show you the modification they made with a different picture. And my picks for the Chicago Street Course Race. Spoiler alert. Real quick. Yes. Somebody's on there who has won. Uh, a road course this year. So, somebody is on here who did win a road course this year. And his name is not Kyle Larson nor William Byron. Anyway, let's get into it. So, what's so reminding of the other time rules? Now, I just do ahead and tell you what race it was real quick. It was the cop race. We had an overtime finish. We had five overtimes in this race. So, what are we going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and go through the rolls. If there's a caution at the end of a race and we go we, we go into overtime if the white flag was not displayed. Denny Hamlin was literally 10 seconds from getting it when, the, when this caution fell. To start overtime number one. Okay. Now, it's a two-lap shootout. Now, only one of those laps has to be completed. Leader has to take the white flag. If a caution before the white flag, we do it again. We it, So, on the first four attempts, we did not get the white flag. But on the fifth attempt, we did. Like I said, though, unlimited attempts. That's part of the, co uh, the first controversy of the week. I'll go ahead. We'll... We'll look at the other in just a second. If the white flag waves, leader and a caution comes out. The the leader, the winner is the leader at time of caution. Now let's take a look at a little bit more. Sorry, I haven't hitched my ear. A little bit more at this week's first of the two controversies of the week. Now these videos I'm using is for from the full NASCAR races YouTube channel. Hopefully you guys don't mind. I am using your videos for this. So, controversy number one. What is controversy number one, you might ask? Okay. Danny Hamlin, on uh, maybe a couple overtimes before, was on the same strategy as Joby Logano. Danny Hamlin, Martin Truex, and a couple other. Kyle Larson, I think. They all were on the same strategy as Joey Logano. And same thing with Noah Gagson. Okay. 
Look at what the laps they were on fuel before we go into overtime. And before when we go into our fifth overtime. Now let's take a lot. Let's take a look to see what happened. I am also gonna put up in a little bit of my analyst because some things are we're about to see some funny business here. So they come out in turn number four, they come to get the green. We're in overtime period number five. Green flag waves again. Joey Logano is the control car, so he doesn't have to get a line first. But you can notice that Chase Briscoe falls back a little bit, who, who we just saw had three laps uh, more fuel. But look at just the run that Tyler Reddick just get off of two. I literally thought Tyler Reddick was going to charge all the way up there and win this race as they go off into turns three and four. Okay? Reddick is now up to second. He was running fifth just about 20 seconds ago. Logano comes down the bottom, takes the white flag. Looks like we saw a car spinning. But anyway, Logano is just pulling, trying to pull away, trying to hold on. But he, again, he is running low on fuel. Here comes Zane Smith, though. Here comes Zane Smith with a little bit of a run. And Zane Smith is on Tyler Reddick. I don't know how Logano still have enough fuel. He said right about here. Right about here. The car stumbles. And he held them off. He held them off somehow. If this race lasted one more second, Zane Smith's name will be where Joey Logano's name is. Zane Smith's name will be where Logano's name is. Oh my God. Zane Smith was so close to getting his first career win and to keep Chevy's streak at Nashville alive. Logano unfortunately broke it. So let's take a look at the race results from the Ally 400. 441 is what I jokingly put as because that's how many miles the race was. Take a look at the results. Now, this week I told you I was going to invert the results. I did that. Dad Fincham finished dead last in 38th. Riley Harris 37th. Christopher Bell 36th. 35th. Michael McDowell. Eric Jones 34th. Ross Chastain 33rd. 32nd. Austin Dillon. 31st. John Hunter Nemechek. 30th. Ricky Stenhouse. 29th. Corey Heim. 28th. Harrison Burton. 27th. Kyle Busch. 26th. Josh Berry. 25th, Brad Kozowski, 24th, Martin Truex, 23rd, Ty Gibbs, 22nd, Daniel Suarez, 21st, Chase Briscoe, Corey LaJoy, 20th, 19th, William Byron, Chase Elliott, 18th, 17th, Todd Gillian, 16th, Carson Holsevar, 15th, Austin Sendrick, 14th, Alex Bowman, 13th, Justin Haley, 12th, Denny Hamlin, 11th, AJ Omdinger, 10th, Noah Gregson, 9th, General Hamrick, 8th, Kyle Book, Kyle Larson, 7th, is Bubba Wallace, 6th, is Ryan Blaney, Chris Busher, fifth, fourth, Ryan Priest, third, Tyler Reddick, second, Zane Smith, like we just said, and Joey Logano, who have barely had enough gas, won the race. What was controversial? Oh, real quick, I forgot to say, what was controversial about Logano winning this race? Logano, like I said, was on the same strategy as Hamlin and, and a couple other guys. Well, Logano somehow miraculously saved enough fuel, in my opinion. But people were saying that Logano's fuel tank might have been a little bit too, a uh, little bit bigger. But I don't think it was bigger. I think Logano just had enough, saved enough fuel to win this race. As much as you guys know how much I used to hate Joey Logano, but I mean, he had enough fuel. He saved enough. And he bought his car into victory lane. The stage results. Bubba Wallace, 10th. 9th, Martin Truex. 8th, Chris Buescher. 7th, William Byron. Ty Gibbs, 6th. 5th, Brad Kozowski. 4th, Kyle Larson. 3rd, Tyler Reddick. 2nd, Denny Hamlin. Christopher Bell won the first stage. 10th, Noah Gregson. 9th, Chris Buescher. 8th, Ryan Blaney. 7th, Martin Truex. 6th, Chase Elliott. 
Fifth, Brad Kozowski. Fourth, Danny Hamlin. Third, Kyle Larson. Second, Tyler Reddick. Christopher Bell swept the stages. I want him to sweep the stages and win a race for once. I mean, it is kind of ridiculous how I would see him sweep the stages and then something crazy goes wrong with his car. And this is not the first time that something like this has happened with Christopher Bell. Now we we'll take a look at the results from the Tennessee Lottery 250 Saturday race. Patrick Emerling, 38th, 37th was Dawson Cram, 36th, Garrett Smithley, 35th, Blaine Perkins, 34th, Chad Fincham, 33rd, Sheldon Creed, 32nd, Logan Bearden, Kyle Weatherman, 31st, 30th, Timmy Smith, 29th, Matt DiBenedetto, Haley Deegan, 28th, 27th, Ross Chastain, Kyle Sieg, 26th, 25th, Leon Hunneman, 24th, Josh Williams. 23rd, Ryan and Alice. 22nd, Jeremy Clements. 21st, Brendan Poole. 20th, Ty Gibbs. 19th, is Jeb Burton. 18th, Anthony Alfredo. 17th, Parker Retzlaff. 16th, Parker Kligerman. 15th, Shane Van Gisbergen. Tyler Reddick, 14th. Brennan Jones, 13th. 12th, Carson Koppel. 11th, Ryan Sieg. 10th, Sam Mayer. 9th, Cole Custer. 8th, Justin Allgaier. 7th, AJ Allmendinger. Riley Herb, 6th. 5th, Noah Gagson. 4th, Austin Hill. 3rd, Jesse Love. 2nd, Chandler Smith. John Hunter Nemechek was our race winner. Stage results. 10th, Ryan Lee Sieg. 9th, Chandler Smith. 8th, John Hunter Nemechek. 7th, Riley Hurst. 6th, Noah Gregson. 5th, Justin Allgaier. 4th, Cole Custer. 3rd, Brandon Jones. 2nd, AJ Amendinger. Ty Gibbs won the first stage. Stage 2, Riley Hurst. Ninth, Justin Allgaier. Brandon Jones, 8th. 7th, Jesse Love. Noah Gregson, 6th. 5th, Chandler Smith. 4th, Ty Gibbs. 3rd, Cole Custer. 2nd, AJ Amendinger and John Anonimichak was the stage 2 winner. Now, I put a comment next to the race winner of this race and letting you know it was actually true. It wasn't, it felt like he did it. No, he actually did this for the truck race. 36th, Brent Holmes. 35th, Mason Maggio. 34th, Ty Tyler Gray. 33rd, Caden Honeycutt. 32nd, Mason Massey. Frank Munez, 31st. The same Frankie Munez that played Malcolm and Malcolm and Mill. 30th, Alcarna Ogta. Ogt Ogta. Bailey Curry, 29th. 28th, Dean Thompson. 37th, Timmy Hill. 36th, Stephen Parsons. Lane Riggs, 25th, 24th. Lawless Island, 23rd, Matt Crafton, 22nd, Spencer Boyd, 21st, Chase Purdy, 20th, Dawson Graham, 19th, Brendan Queen, Dawson Sutton, 18th, 17th, Clint Boyer, 16th, Jack Wood, 15th, Ty Dillon, 14th, Tina Gray, Nick Sanchez, 13th, 12th, Connor Jones, 11th, Stuart Friesian, 10th, Jake Garcia. 9th, Ty Majeski. Matt Mills, 8th. 7th, Brendan Ben Rhodes. Green and Finger, 6th. 5th, Tyler Ankrum. 4th, Raja Kuroff. 3rd, Corey Heim. 2nd, Daniel Dye. This comment you're about to see right next to Christian X's name was is an actual true comment. This is the first time in 12 years that this has happened in a truck race. And first time in any of the top three NASCAR major series since Joey Logano did it in Bristol in 2015. Christian Eckes leads all 150 laps of this race. So, 
I'm not even going to say his name. I'm still going to pull it up and still put it in the description. But we're not even going to say his name for the stage results. Because I already made the comment. He led every single lap of this race. So, of course, he had to win all three stages. Stage results. Tyler Ancrum, 10th. 9th. Clint Boyer. 8th. Ty Majeski, 7th. Stuart Friesian, 6th. Raja. 5th. Daniel Dye. 4th. Ken Infinger. 3rd. Corey Heim. 2nd. Lane Riggs. Stage 2. Ty Majeski. 9th. Tyler Ancrum. 8th. Matt Crafton. 7th. Stuart Friesian. 6th. Ben Rhodes. 5th. Grant Infinger. 4th, Daniel Dye. 3rd, Rajah. 2nd, Corey Heim. Like I said, I'm not, I didn't bother saying Christian X's name because like I just said, he won all three stages by leading 150 laps. Out of 150. Let's take a look at the Cup Series playoffs. I decided to be a little creative this week with looking at them. So the black and red with the red highlighted means they're locked in. Kyle Larson, three wins at Las Vegas. Sonoma in Kansas. Denny Hamlin with wins at Bristol, Richmond, and Dover. Christopher Bell with wins at Loudoun, Charlotte, Phoenix. Orlando Byron, day, our Daytona 500 winner. Coda and Martinsville. Chase Elliott with the win at, lone win at Texas. Tyler Reck, Talladega. No, well, no, okay, I forgot not all of them. I was I was playing around with this a little, so as you can see, Ryan Blaney got a win at Iowa. Brad Keselowski got a win at Darlington. Joey Logano, our previous race winner, at Nashville. Daniel Suarez won Atlanta. Austin Cindric won Worldwide Technology. I went ahead and put it Martin Truex on the lock side. I mean, if we do have two different winners between now and. Uh, With, if we have, if we have two, the next two races we have somebody who's won, who's already has the number, who has one win next to him. It should be enough to put Truex in the playoffs. Tag Gibbs is plus seventy, Ross Chastain plus sixty six, Chris Busch plus fifty six, Alex Bowman plus fifty one, Bubba Laws is out by fifty one, Chase Briscoe is out by seventy eight. I should have boarded his name. But it's so likable, he can probably sneak in on points. Kyle Busch, I hate to say it, is in a must-win situation. Josh Perry, must-win situation. Infinity playoffs. Chandler Smith with the wins at Phoenix and Richmond. Austin Hill, Daytona and Atlanta. Sam Mayer, Iowa and Texas. Sam Vings, Goodsbergen, Sonoma and Portland. Justin Allgaier, Darlington. Jesse Love, Talladega. Cole Custer should be able to get in. Riley Hurst should be able to get in. AJ Almendinger is plus 80. Sheldon Creed plus 77. Parker Kligman plus 46. Sammy Smith plus 11. Ryan Sieg is currently out by 11. Brittany Jones is out by 54. Anthony Alfredo is out by 59. Britton Pohl is out by 113. Pretty much that's a must win situation. Parker Retzlaff is out by 115. That's pretty much a must-win situation. Josh Williams, definite must-win situation, 158. Now, trucks, they only have three races left before their playoffs start. So, more names will be bolted on the truck side since we're about to start their playoffs any minute. Corey Heim, uh, with his wins, I believe, at... Coda, Worldwide Technology, uh, I don't remember where all of his wins were, but I know one was at Coda, another was at Worldwide Technology. North Wilkesboro in Kansas. Christian Eckes got Martinsville, Bristol, and Nashville. Nick Sanchez, Daytona, and Charlotte. Raja, Las Vegas. 
Ty Majeski's 144 points above cut line. With three races go, he should be locked in. Tyler Ankrum and walked him in as well. Because, we, like I said, we only have three races for them, lads, so that should be enough. Ben Rhodes, plus 38. Ben. I accidentally put Ben Rhodes on here twice. So, for the... Ben wrote the... First Ben Rhodes was supposed to say Tyler Gray, at plus 38. Second Ben Rhodes is the correct Ben Rhodes at plus 34. Grant and Finger plus 33. And Tanner Gray plus 14. Daniel Dime is minus 14, so he should pull his way in. Stuart Friesen, 17th, pulling his way in with those three races to go. Matt Crafton, like I said, we're three races to go. He pretty much has to win. Same thing with Chase Purdy, pretty much has to win. So, the other controversy of the week, a little quick, I'll go ahead and tell you there was a penalty from it. Um, Carson Office post of our spun Harrison Burton under caution. It was a little bit uncalled move. There's a little bit too much controversy about it, but actually, I think there's too little controversy about it. You should not be spinning people under yellow flag at almost full speed. Carson Hosefus and Penalty. Sorry, I'm tired. Um, 25 points and then a $50,000 fine. Let's take a look at about what he did. I just used the same video, got, by the way. So they're just going down back stretch and he just flat out spins them. Flat out just spins Harrison Burton. We already know how unsafe these cards were. We found out in 2022. Like, he literally just right hooks Harrison Burton. And, oh, let's look at something here. I need another angle of this. I need another angle of this. We're going to back up a couple seconds. I need I need to see a caution line. Before he spins Harrison, I need to see a caution light. Yeah, it's on. You can see it right there. Caution light's on. And then he just spins him. I think the 25 point and $50,000 fine penalty is a little bit less strict, but that's just my opinion. Let's take a look at the changes to the car for weather on road courses. So, one slide for each. Blink and red light, and here's the look from the AJ Amendinger's car from 2020's um, Roval race. That was That whole race was raining in the rain, by the way. And you see that light? That's the red light that I was talking about. And it blinks for visibility. Windshield wipers. Now, here's Alex Bowman's car from the 2020 Coda race, which was called actually because of rain early because of visibility reasons. But still, before that, they were using windshield wipers. And like we discussed last week with New Hampshire, they put weather tires on the cars for the road courses. And I just used one of the same pictures last week and it just looks like a regular tire that we see on our cars where are my picks for the Grant Park 165 ah they're meant to be by paragraph but anyway I think Shane Van Gisbergen has a pretty good shot at um, defending his title as the Chicago Street Course winner AJ Amendinger has a shot to put his name on the list of drivers that was one on the streets. And he has a chance, I think, to, he has a chance to do it twice this weekend. Chase Elliott has been a road course winner. He's still looking for that first road course win in the next gen car. Christopher Bell pretty much dominated this race last year until I think he got spun out or something. Daniel Suarez and Ross, both Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain, they pretty much had some pretty good road course program together. Both of their first two career wins actually came on road courses, so don't. Look. So I say pretty much watch out for the both track house guys. And then Justin Haley nearly won this race last year. I still think he's going to be a dark horse this year. Anyway, like see, I've got favorite. Be nice, go be awesome. Eric Paint, don't don't do a date. See you later. All right, so 
when we did the podcast, when I was recording this, I totally forgot to include silly season. And this is what it looks like right now. The green means these are for sure. I mean, these are these are locked. I would go ahead and also mark Suarez as a lot for. Actually, I'm kind of waiting until I hear something more from Trackhouse, but I do think Daniel Suarez is kind of saying the 99. Now, the green means they're blocked. I'm going to go through and change it before each podcast if something changes since last podcast. But I would think, but it was announced today that Josh Berry is going to more than likely stay in the 21, going to go over to the 21s. So let me go know what you guys think. Like, subscribe, comment, favorite. Be nice, go be awesome. Eric Payton, don't hate. See you later.